Good evening. I'm Joe Carbonetta, and this is Arroyo Live. This program is produced by and through the facilities of Pasadena Media to help enrich our community through informative and meaningful conversation. You can share your questions or comments with us anytime at Arroyo Live at PasadenaMedia.org. In 1980, President Jimmy Carter issued the first presidential proclamation declaring the week of March 8, 1980, National Women's History Week, an idea begun by the Education Task Force of the Sonoma County, California Commission on the Status of Women in 1978. It addressed a topic virtually unknown at the time in the K through 12th grade curriculum or the consciousness of the public. It quickly rose to a matter of national significance. Over the next several years, Congress passed annual joint resolutions declaring a week in March National Women's History Week. Then, in 1987, after a petition by the National Women's History Project, the Congress and President Ronald Reagan proclaimed March 1987 National Women's History Month. Since then, every U.S. president has continued to do so annually. Tonight, we join in celebrating Women's History Month and take a look at how it relates to Pasadena. My guests this evening will be historian Roberta Martinez and community volunteers Jan Sanders and Beverly Morgan Sando. Please join us for this week's edition of Arroyo Live. Thank you all for joining me this evening. Uh, I'd like to ask each of you to take a moment to tell our viewers at home a little bit more about yourselves. And Jen, if it's all right, I'd like to begin with you. Sure, thank you. Thank you for the question, Joe. It's delightful to be here. I, I always enjoy doing these, these kinds of programs. Uh, some of you may remember me from my days as the director of the Pasadena Public Library, although I've never in my life had such COVID hair. I just can't get used to all this hair, but here it is. Um, the option was for me to cut it or to let it go, and I just let it go. Um, but I've, I've been involved with women's issues for, obviously, my whole life, which is a fairly long life. Um, I have a daughter. I have a granddaughter. So I'm obviously continuing that interest and continuing to move along. I've been very active in uh, Pasadena organizations, arts, um, sciences, sciences, lots of community activity, that kind of thing, involved with the league. Um, one, one thing and another throughout my career. But as I said, I retired five years ago and I am trying to take things a little easier and put my energy into things that really matter to me. So thank you for this opportunity. And again, it's a pleasure to have you here. Beverly, can we ask you now a little more about yourself? Thank you, thank you. I've, all, I've been around Pasadena now for about 20 years. Um, that is, I've lived here for 20 years, came here by way of Cincinnati, Ohio, Chicago, San Francisco, and, um, and so I'm here. Um, um, I belong to several groups, uh, the League of Women Voters. Um, I'm chair of the uh, Commission on the Status of Women, um, Women in Leadership, Vital Voices, um, the National Council of Negro Women. And none of those organizations do I speak for today. I only speak for <laughs> myself. So I mention them because they, uh, uh, they, they are groups I happen to belong to. People may, they may recall seeing me marching in the, uh, uh, in the Rose Parade as one of the 100 women celebrating women having uh, reached the right to vote. And I am... Uh, glad to be here. So thank you for inviting me. Well, and based on, on everything that you just gave us, it sounds like you're very, very busy. So we really appreciate you taking the time <laughs> to join us this evening. Uh, and Roberta, can you please tell us a little more about yourself as well? Sure. It's always great to be here. Always great to be involved with anything and in, involved with Pasadena Media. Um, Roberta H. Martinez, I get to call myself now an actor, director, writer and historian. Yeah, I know in my third age, I've been doing some another couple of ways of sharing history. I've been involved in Pasadena um, for about 30 years off and on in a variety of ways. I was lucky enough to 
uh, be a part of the library commission, the arts commission, being involved with Armory, um, in the class with Leadership Pasadena, and primarily um, have always tried to share history and what we now know is kind of public history. So that sharing the stories of the people who have lived here um, in non-traditional ways. And one of those ways was through a parade. I'm uh, the founder of the Latino Heritage Parade in Jamaica. And uh, there's just so much history and it's so complex, so many layers in the city of Pasadena that it gives me lots to explore. Well, again, we thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us all this evening. It is a pleasure to have all three of you ladies here with us. And uh, with that in mind, of course, we are talking about National Women's History Month and, and International Women's Day. And uh, I'd like to begin the discussion by asking each of you to tell our viewers a little bit about what those things mean to you, the significance of them. Uh, and, and I guess we'll go back to the top. Uh, Jan, if I could ask you to start off, if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I think I think like all things that are uh, celebratory, the Women's History Month is is a chance to uh, applaud our successes, make note of the things that we've tried to do and haven't quite accomplished, uh, and as as Roberta has reminded us, bring forth a lot of history and a lot of ideas that have that have uh, uh, driven us along this particular path. Uh, it's, it's interesting to me that, that we have a, a Women's History Month because really women's history permeates everything. When you're 51% of the population, it's hard to pull something out that isn't a part of, that women aren't a part of and a part of their history. So, so it's, a little bit, um, uh, it's a little bit confusing to have a special month just for women, but, but I, I do appreciate it. And I think that there are a number of ways that we can celebrate women and encourage young women. I think one of the big assets of Women's History Month is to bring forth characters and ideas mm -hmm. and career choices that we might not have, have originally thought of as women's roles. And that always feeds um, our younger women and helps them to soar. I was listening to something just the other day that said the the next time we go to the moon, it's an all women crew. <laughs> so how about that? Yeah. Uh, it's not just a woman going along. It's an all woman crew. And, right. the, and the flight director is a woman. So, you know, all you have to do is kind of give us a little leg room and we'll, we'll be off and running. We'll take it all, right. <laughs> exactly. Why not? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. I, I'd like to, to kind of piggyback um, uh, on what Jan has said, um, you know, um, at, at some point we will not need a women's history month because, um, oh. women will be, women's contributions will be recognized throughout, throughout history's telling. You won't be able to tell the story of this country without talking about women. Um, and um, on, on Monday, uh, the Pasadena City Council uh, read a proclamation uh, designating March Women's History Month. And one of the comments um, I said to them was that uh, at some point, you know, it, it, it's, it's just not gonna be possible to tell, to tell the story without women, much as it's not possible, it will never be possible to talk about vice presidents of, 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 of this country without mentioning the name of an African-American, Asian-American woman, Madam VP Kamala Harris. Um, and, and I think the, the real significance of Women's History Month is that uh, if you see it, you can do it. And so it, it, it allows us to bring forward those, the, all those accomplishments so young girls, young women can see it and they know that they can do it. Yeah. Just like yeah. that wonderful young woman said at the inauguration, if you can dream it, you can be it. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. If you know the dream exists, then you can begin to have a conversation about it and figure out 
if you're going to be that, if you're going to be something like that, or if you're going to be something that complements that, right. I mean, it opens up the doors entirely. Mm -hmm. And and having the uh, broadest sort of representation of people in our history, makes it just enriches us for all the stories that already have existed and all the successes where people not only have worked within their own groups, but have worked across groups with each other in support of each other. And often it was women who were in those roles. Um, and often it was women who uh, whose names weren't included in the listing when the newspaper print came out. Right. So right. Uh, when women's history, the part of the reason for women's history, month, day, whatever it might be, exploration, is finding out not only the names of those women, but how else they were involved in the community, in the society right. that hasn't been often reported or shared. Right, right. And I, I and, think we should go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say that that has really been true for women of color. And, and so uh, and so Women's History Month um, encourages us to see to see the intersection of of uh, of uh, gender and race, you know, That's and and. Yeah. Doesn't it? I mean, you know, we 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 really take a look at, you know, that not only have women been excluded, but women of color. I mean, we haven't even been, uh, you know, it's like, where are we? Yeah, yeah. You weren't even a fringe element for most no, of the time. No, 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 no. I mean, I remember watching television early on. I'm say, dating myself and thinking, where are the black people? You know, wherever there is humanity. They are people of color, but I don't. I don't see us. I don't see me. Yeah. And yeah. and you know it's interesting because because when you give when you give that tiny little toehold, that tiny little opening uh, for people to get in, it just blooms and goes out. I remember when we first started talking about having the float in the Rose Bowl parade, mm -hmm. and yeah. everybody said it takes weeks and years to get that all pulled together. You'll never right. raise the money. It right. won't happen on and on and on. And here was a room full of women and they said, back up and watch us. Yes, yes. We can do this. We yes. can do this. We can raise, we can raise a quarter of a million dollars. And we and did. Make this happen. And, and you did. And did. you did. We well, did. So exciting. To bring so exciting. the conversation into a, a more local circle for just a moment. And I apologize, Roberta, if I'm going to put you on the spot with this one as our historian. Uh, yeah. But I'm wondering if if any of you ladies might be able to relate uh, a, a significant figure, uh, somebody that we might be able to spotlight that comes from the Pasadena area and their significance to the, the history of women. OK, so what I did was I wrote a list. So get comfy. Uh Oh, OK. okay. <laughs> and what I tried to do is to include some of the names from a variety of groups that sometimes we assume we know, but maybe we don't. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first person, Eulalia Perez Guillén de Mariné. She was the person for whom Rancho El Rincón de San Pascual was reserved. She was not an aristocrat, she was a widow. And if you live in the city of Pasadena, you live on land that was reserved for her. If exactly. you live in land that goes a mile up into our foothills, you live on land that was reserved for her. If you live in parts of San Marino, you live in lands that was reserved for her. <laughs> so that's a good name. So that's a good name to know. Ruth Brown Thompson, when you're talking about women who are not known, her brothers happen to be over, uh, there's the monument over there on uh, Brown Mountain. Mm -hmm. the, the brothers Brown, she was involved here. She was also a pacifist and she was involved in a church here in town. Mother, uh, oh my goodness, Minnie Owens, who was married to Bob Owens, who was one of the very first black businessmen in the area. Nellie Russ, who was the first uh, librarian for the city of Pasadena, who kept all sorts of papers uh, that were primarily in Spanish because she thought they were of value because they are part of the history. Christine mm -hmm. Lofsted. I'm just going to run through some more names. Christine Lofsted. She's away. Shaman um, Himano Uchi. Mm -hmm. Helena Goldman. Miss Goldman was very involved with the Jewish Temple and the Ladies' uh -huh. Aid Society. Dr. Edna Griffin, who was the first Black 
woman physician in the area and was also very involved with DSEG. The Germanian folks had several women that were involved in the community. Yvette Lightfoot was involved with Pasadena Unified School District, and she was the teacher. Uh, the learning online actually began sort of in Pasadena because there were Spanish lessons that she led that were out of the studio where some of the people that are working at Pasadena Media started out over on Hudson. Um, Anne-Marie Villacana, Connie mm -hmm. Ray Castro, Lydia Palmer from El Centro de Acción Social, Maria Luisa Eisenberg, Leonora Barron, I have to mention these ladies, otherwise I'll get in real trouble, and <laughs> Jessica Magdaleno, who was here during the uh, 50s and the 60s. And that's just a start. It's so These good. are all women who it would be wonderful to have somehow or the other uh, people have access to who these women are and how they contributed to our city because they were involved as, as these good ladies know, these good folks know, if you're on a, kitty, uh, on a committee like the Commission on the Status of Women, you have a visibility and can have conversations to make sure that more people get to know about folks like the names I just read. Right, right. And there's, you know, to add to, add to your long list, there's also um, uh, Loretta Thompson Glickman, who was mm -hmm. the first uh, one of first black woman mayor of Pasadena and the first woman mayor of a city larger than a hundred thousand. There is Octavia Butler, yes. science writer yes. extraordinaire, yes. um, who is who is like a, a, a she is a giant and she is as I understand a Pasadena native. So there yes. are. There are so many women. Well, and I think, and I, <laughs> I so think in bringing up their names, you bring up an interesting point, which is part of the reason I didn't share those names is because those are names that are already well known, should be better known. Yes. But yes. are known, yes. right? Yes. yes. And part of yes. the list that's here gets into that next layer of yes. people. Yes. That, yes. That, are, that are on the committee member, that are the committee members, but maybe not the chair. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right, the people right. doing the work. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Work people doing the work. Yes. Yes. There it is. <laughs> well, it's 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 ordinary women, sometimes doing extraordinary things. Absolutely, right? absolutely, right? Beverly. Ordinary women doing extraordinary things. That's 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 who we wanna we wanna lift up. We 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 wanna say hey say these women's names, you know, recognize these women. They're, they're in the history. They're in the and history. Some, and sometimes find out the names of these women. Yes. Right? yes. Because you'll yes. see a picture. It's, it's much one of the other areas I have a passion for is mm -hmm. folks that are workers sort of history. Mm -hmm. So if you have an image of the, the something that's being constructed, you'll often have the architect and they'll be named and you'll have whoever is the business person that's you know, doing the contracting and, and, and they'll be named. And then you have all of these people behind them. Yes. yes and the, all yes. of those people behind them are living so many of the stories that the majority of that community is, is living. Yes. And it's good to know the exceptional, but also good to know the folks that are going, doing the nine to five after yes. they left off the kids and before they cook dinner. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Absolutely, Roberta. Well, yeah. I, I can see that I came to the right place in inquiring about a list <laughs> of, of important people right here in the, in the city of Pasadena. And actually, to that end, I do have to ask Jen if there was anybody that you would like to add to that list as well. Um, well, of of course, we all remember Katie Knack, who was one of our one of our first mayors and a very outstanding woman leader. Uh, Cynthia Cynthia Kurtz was our city manager. For a number of years, she is responsible for hiring me. So you can you can blame her or applaud her, whatever your feeling is. Um, but there there are just any number of of women who have been such strong leaders in education, in city government, and and everything else that that comes along. I think there is no shortage uh, of women in in leadership roles, and we and we have a lot of women who are sort of, as Roberta said, sort of second tier. Uh, one of my friends. 
uh, who, whom I think a great deal of, is is uh, Monica Hubbard, who mm-hmm. who is very instrumental in keeping women connected and women moving okay. forward. She has a publication that she puts out called yeah. Wired Women, which yes. is an electronic publication, uh, telling us all what's happening this week, who's celebrating what, what's going on, are there grant avail- grant availabilities we should know on, all those kinds of working facts that are really difficult to dig out on your own. Mm-hmm. And so it takes someone like Monica, who, who is dedicated to doing that and does it with no funding, um, to, to, to do that kind of work. So you're ex- absolutely right. It's, uh, it's the women who, between dropping off the kids and making dinner, get a lot of stuff done. Yeah. A lot of stuff done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm certain that there are, are lots of events that are taking place, not only locally here in the city, but perhaps along the county and across the country. And, and I certainly hope that we can address that in just a moment, too. But uh, the first question that I'd like to ask all of you ladies is, uh, how would you say is the proper way to celebrate uh, this this month? And before you answer that, let me pose an additional question. Is celebrate even the right word to use? Is it recognize? Is it, do either of those words go far enough? Yes and yes and yes and yes. (laughs) You know, I mean, it's like anything else, right? If if it is a part of your everyday, if it's incorporated in, then it becomes, you know, you recognize this. And then on occasions, I don't know about you, but I love somebody celebrating my birthday. You know, you bet. It's, a, it's a very special time to to pull together and remember and share and and have goodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I th- and I think that it's a it's an opportunity, as I said early on, to really highlight the steps that we've made. Uh, I'm I'm big on advocacy, whether it's advocacy in policy making or in uh, getting people elected or or whatever it might be. You know, we still haven't passed the Equal Rights Amendment. That's right. It's only been a hundred years that we've been working on that, and we haven't had it ratified by enough by enough states within the time frame to um, to have it be a part of the Constitution. So there are issues like that that unbelievably still need our work and attention. And a month like this really gives us an occasion to stand up and say, um, "Yes, let's 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 get back to work on that. Let's make that." Let's make that happen. Let's applaud those women who have done so much work so far. Right. And let's encourage those young ones coming up to bring something forward as well. So um, the thing that a a month like Women's History Month does is it brings that spotlight on the effort and the people involved. It's like when we used to have, uh, well, we still do, I guess, have, have National Library Week. They would always do a lot on the national press about National Library Week. And of course, a, a city like Pasadena doesn't need a National Library Week. They're, they revere their libraries every day of every week. But, but it gives you an opportunity to stand back for a second and say, good work, thank you. And the same is true for women's work. Good work, thank you, now what's next? Right. So it's it's like there there is no good way or bad way to celebrate. Um, 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 uh, we should do what we do to recognize the progress to date, just as Jan and uh, Roberta have said. We recognize what has been accomplished today to date. And then we look at what needs to be accomplished. And certainly the Equal Rights Amendment, uh, certainly looking at what's happening in terms of, um, in terms of what's, hap- what's happening with voting, voting rights, uh, the effort to, you know, to kind of turn back. And, um, um, and, and so we, we look at, Maintain not only recognizing what we've accomplished, maintaining what we've accomplished, and then moving forward. What else yeah. do we need to do? Right. We can't, we can't stop because then you start no. slipping back. Yes. 
Yes. Well, and and I think one of, the, yeah. one of the things that happens when you have a moment where you recognize the work that's being done, being in leadership, being in a leadership position can be pretty lonely. And some days can be pretty sloggy where you just feel like you keep going uphill and having folks gathering together, you see all of the work that they're doing too. And it's re-energizing. It helps you from becoming weary. Yes, and, and, you, and you realize that even though your piece might seem small to you, it's playing into a larger issue. It's playing into a larger, uh, a larger arena. I know there's a local organization, well, there's there's a branch of the National Caucus of uh, Women in Politics. I think I think I have that right. National, National Women's, Women's Political Caucus. Caucus, right. Yeah. yeah. National Women's Political Caucus. And they always, um, you know, we have local chapters of that. And, and they're always encouraging women to participate at the commission level, at the committee level, at the city council level, so that your you're ready to step in and, and get something done. And they do workshops and they do trainings and those kinds of things. So I think that there are a lot of people um, in Pasadena who work in these areas and who make sure that those opportunities are out there so that women can in fact feel, feel not just needed and wanted, but um, trained and ready. Right, right, right. Women, women can be supported as they reach for uh, elected office as they reach for being appointed to, to various positions. So yeah, we've had some really absolutely. good women yeah. on the absolutely. city council. Oh yeah. We need yeah, more. you know, we had Jackie for a long time. Jackie Robinson yes. uh, was, was on the council for a long time. Uh, 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 Villanova, um, you said her name earlier. Anne-Marie Villacana, I couldn't think of her name, was, was very active for us. Of course, Margaret, um, Margaret just retired, but we mm -hmm. put a woman back in that position. So we have two, two women on the council now. So, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Are there events that are scheduled to take place over the course of this month uh, on a national level, on a local level, on a regional level? Oh, wow. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> I, again, I apologize, ladies. I did not mean to put anyone on the spot. Well, it's, it's just that there, there's so much. There's a National Women's what, um, History Project. Um, uh, our audience can, can go online to check to see what's happening there. Um, there's a National, uh, uh, national Congress of uh, Negro Women. Um, our audience can go online there. Um, the, um, uh, the Pasadena Commission on the Status of Women, uh, the event that we'll use to, uh, to recognize Women's History Month will not be until April, uh, and that'll be April 21st. And that will build on the theme that I think Jan mentioned, which is supporting and, um, supporting and helping women uh, run for run for political office. That'll mm -hmm. be the theme of that April 21st uh, event. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And certainly the League of Women Voters has always been active in, in women's rights and women's, women's issues and has been around as long as we've been fighting the fight for women's suffrage in mm -hmm. general. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so there are a lot of local activities sponsored by the League of Women Voters. So I think that, you know, at the risk of leaving out the top 18 that I didn't think of on the moment, you, you just need to, to search out those websites because everybody celebrates Women's History Month. Right, right. There's, yeah. there's a group called Women in Leadership Vital Voices. Yes, uh, that's a really good group. Yeah, and the, they will be having someone to talk about redistricting uh, later, on, uh, later on this month, which is going to impact all of us, uh, yeah. women and men. Right. I, I, I uh, attended a seminar last week that was offered on redistricting and Martha Zavala from the League of Women Voters had reached out. And so there was a training that was going on to just kind of find out, which it doesn't sound like a celebration necessarily, but it is one of those ways that all of the things we've been talking about, what women can do, what any person can do, 
in learning more and getting more involved in their community and making sure that the representation for their community is maybe more reflective, has mm -hmm. greater allies, however you'd like to view it, um, to the people that are living in the area. Right. Well, I think I think it's important as we're as we're bringing people up and bringing young girls up to to be active in these kinds of efforts to 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 know that we're not all going to get to be uh, the vice president and have a husband who is the second gentleman. I love that term. Oh, it's um, wonderful. It's isn't wonderful. that great? I mean, that's a great term. Yes, it's anyway, <laughs> anyway, but but <laughs> apart from that. Where the where the real work happens is in those policy groups, that group on redistricting, because that is the gerrymandering that gets the that gets the seats to be of one party or another and then begins to skew things out of kelter for what really needs to be um, needs to be there in terms of re accurate representation. So so the policy arm of it is really, really important. And that's um, that's a little bit of the drudgery of political work, but it's so, it's so necessary and it's so um, uh, enriching. If you can feel that you, you know, I worked a little on that. I helped a little bit with that. Uh, maybe I made a difference. Yeah. Is the subject of women's history one that is properly addressed in the school system today? No. <laughs> Roberta, you're in the Very schools. succinct answer there. No, just one word. That's... Well, it's, it's one of those things. It's it's a hard thing to do. I mean, you know, stepping back um, as, as an instructor, as a teacher, you have only so many hours. And now that we're living in, in Zoom land, that makes it that much harder because you almost have to have an entertainment element in, uh, in order to keep your viewer involved somehow or the other. Um, and, and until you have a generation of teachers who really know women's history or any other affinity group's history, it's going to be hard for them to share it with that same kind of sincerity and verve that is part of what makes learning history interesting. Um, it's wonderful to have a day, it's wonderful to have a month uh, to acknowledge a person or a group. But if you can infuse it throughout, which is a challenge, then you really are beginning to make a, a bigger difference. Yeah. Well, and, and, and you ladies know that I'm not going to let this go by without talking about a few books. Um, <laughs> I went over to my granddaughters this morning and said, we're going to talk about women today, Maisie. What books should we use? And she said, you should talk about Josephine, mm -hmm. Josephine Baker. It's a, bird, it's a board book. These are books for like, Two and three year olds, Josephine right. Baker, Coco Chanel, Women Leaders. Here's my little golden book. Remember my little golden books about everything from puppies on up. This one's about Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Mm -hmm. I mean, how much do you love that? My little golden book of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. That's terrific. And then, of course, she brought me her favorite. Now, Maisie is three, and she brought me this one. The big book of girl power. <laughs> it's so great. So, you know, it's never too early. It's never too early to let them know that their identity is special and important and contributes. Right. So good for her. She recognizes that already. Not that she had much of a choice since I'm her grandmother, but. Absolutely. <laughs> um, let's see. I would just add that. The, the, the people who write the history books that they're like, I, 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 think, I think we need to look at who's writing the history. And, and like, is that, is there diversity there? Uh, diversity, not only in terms of uh, women, but, but like racial diversity also. Um, and, um, um, and Jan, there are, there is one book, well, there are several books I'd like to, to bring up. And this is, I don't know if you're able to see Oh, that. yes. Yes. African-American women. Women. Struggle. So, so like, I mean, the, the information, the information, um, uh, is there, but like it, at this point, it takes some effort to find it. Um, 
I would like to see where like not so much effort was required on the part of on the part of people teaching that like the information is in the resources they have, is in the history books they have. That you know that someone is making sure that that's reflective of of the real history. Yeah, and it's like it's like anything else. You know, the mm -hmm. the what the children hear and what the children pick up is only as good as that classroom teacher. Yeah, and it's and it's important in the areas that are important to that classroom teacher. So mm -hmm. so um, is it is it taught enough? Maybe sometimes. Uh, could it be done better? Maybe sometimes. So um, I think, you know, that's that's part of our role as grandparents and and the rest of the village members raising these children um, to make sure that we let them know that it's not just what's in your reader. There are lots of other things out there, too. Mm. Well, in building on the idea. Of, Wait, oh, I'm sorry. Roberta has no, 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 no. I was going to show you. And and this is. Something that's from, let's see, there we go. Yes, very good, yes. Okay, so this is starting with the very, very little ones. And this is part, of, we have 50, we'll say 27% of the characters in children's books are animals, and that's kind of cool. 50% uh, are white, and you can see how, let's see, there we go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the reflection really does make a difference. Um, so, you know, when you're talking about writers, it's a matter of making sure that you're not only getting books that are reflective of your own experience, but getting books that are reflective of different experiences, too. Mm -hmm. And by doing Absolutely. that, we can, we can support each other in right. getting the books out there. Um, and I have to tell you, as a historian, that also means that you need to go to those lectures. <laughs> you need to pay attention. <laughs> it, it helps. It really does help. Yeah. 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 Well, I, good. Uh, um, I'd like a copy of that, Roberta. That's that's very interesting. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. In, uh, Thank in you. Building Who published idea. that? Who published that, Roberta? Good luck, Joe. <laughs> um, you did. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> no, no, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, Cooperative Children's Book Center, School of Education, University yeah. of Wisconsin, Madison. Oh, yeah. Madison. Okay. Okay. So, and, and okay. 2018, I'm sure they have something for 2019. Yeah, probably so. Now, sorry, Joe, sorry, Joe. we didn't mean to go off track. That, on you. That's all right. Uh, I was just going to say, though, in going forward, uh, speaking about the ideas of, of whether or not uh, women's accomplishments and, and uh, women's history is uh, discussed um, adequately enough in the school system, it's Interesting to note that, of course, it has been said we live in the information age, and certainly all of that information is available uh, if you search online for it. But the vast majority don't do that, and not only with women's history, but in general. My next question might be a little more controversial. How has social media helped or hurt uh, women's history? in the same way that it has helped and hurt any number of other ideas and concepts. Um, the whole Me Too move, movement was uh, sort of an offshoot of some, some social history, um, some social uh, networking kinds of things. So that, I, I think you can't look at just social networking, but it's, um, it's part, of, part of the larger picture. Has that, has that um, avenue, that platform, been helpful to women? Probably sometimes, yes, probably sometimes. Probably less than helpful <coughs> other times. So, okay. you know, that's, that's sort of a roundabout way of saying yes, no, maybe, all at once. You know, um, I guess in a sense we don't really have control over social social media and maybe we shouldn't because that's there's all that's all around the whole free speech um issue but 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 i think there there needs to be a way to filter the information um young people young people get because misinformation 
um, is out there. And um, uh, bullying via social media um, is out there. And so um, it is, it is something that 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 can absolutely be used for good and has been used for good, but it has also been used for bad. Uh, I guess the, the reason so, I, I bring up this question, and please mm -hmm. forgive me for interrupting, but I, I think the reason I bring up this question is because so much of social media seems to uh, fixate on superficial uh, things, superficial natures. Uh, it, it there's very little. Uh, in the day-to-day -day, uh, readings of most social media or the media in general about women's accomplishments, it's it's certainly much uh, more superficial than that. And that's why I, I pose this question. Does this, has it helped? Are there things that can be done that would be more beneficial in, in raising awareness in, in, in the general consciousness of society? Um, I think that, I'm, I'm not sure whether it was Jan or Roberta um, uh, that said, it's there if you search for it. The information uh, is there. And so I, in fact, I use the, I use the, um, I use the internet to search for information um, on women. And, and, and so I found the information, it's there. Um, um, but, but the misinformation, uh, is also there. So I, I don't, I, I guess all that to say, I, I don't have an answer to that. I think it can be a good thing, uh, but it can also be a bad thing. I think it's been good in that it allows people with, um, similar sort of thoughts to be able to get together where they might not be able to, especially when we've been dealing with this COVID. And by the way, this is Larry who has insisted he's gonna be a part of this. Um, speaking of COVID and <laughs> this is not typically what I brought to a library commission meeting. Um, but, and, and I think it's also offered um, an opportunity with things like Wikipedia to get information out there that you might not have known otherwise. Yes. I think part of what, the part of the challenge that can be approached um, to have a positive income outcome is people getting together, encouraging um, each other how they might explore and use the media. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you get a um, a group of people looking on to find out about Doña Eulalia Perez Guillén de Marine? Well, she's on Wikipedia, folks. And she <laughs> on Facebook. She has her own group on Facebook. Um, and that you you couldn't do before. And so part of it too, I think, is sometimes a matter of our learning how to use the new technology to serve what we would like to see happen that's good and positive. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and how to and how to judge the technology for accuracy. Yes, because it's like the old saying about, well, I saw it in the New York Times, so it must be true. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. And just because you saw it online, it may or may not be true. So so uh, part of our responsibility as as information users is to make sure that we impart to other people how to do that in an accurate way. Mm -hmm. Is there a good age to start educating our young females about women's history? women's accomplishments and uh, and to let them know all that they can do birth birth at least mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah at least that's it's like our, you know our, our girls and our boys absolutely it's gotta be both absolutely. right yeah absolutely yeah 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 and, and do you think that the media in general could play a bigger and better part in that as well uh, speaking for myself, I'm certainly old enough to remember when there were a, a lot more uh, educational or, or uh, public service oriented programming on, especially on the weekends, uh, the, the schoolhouse programs and those type of things come to mind. We don't see so much of that anymore. Do you think the media could do a better job? Well, I don't know. I, I think that, I think there's a lot out. It's like, it's like uh, Beverly was saying about 
There's a lot of information out there about women if you seek it out. There's a lot of information out there for, for, for us to use with our children if, if we seek it out. Um, you know, the, the capacity for toddlers and preschool individuals to have um, exposure to all sorts of foreign languages, foreign cultures, uh, diverse opinions, diverse lifestyles and careers that, that you and I never, never had an opportunity to do. It's, it's pretty amazing. So it can be an incredible tr teaching and training tool, uh, but we have to use it wisely. You also have to, um, uh, you know, left, left to her own devices, my little three-year-old would have her head in her, in her, um, in her tablet six hours a day. She's fascinated by it. She loves to play the game. She loves to get on there and learn Spanish words. She, it, you know, it's like having your own television set that you can interact with. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there is an incredible capacity, but it's like everything else. It takes some, it takes some supervision and some oversight. Right, right. I think that um, one of the things that parents do that they do well is that they they end up scanning their their like children's environment for like safety. You know, when when you have a young one, you know, you get on your knees and you walk through the you not walk, but you crawl through the house to make sure that you know everything's safe. You know that there are no sharp edges. That you know you 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 end up seeing what that little one sees. What I think needs to happen is that the environment needs to be scanned for like those influences that like are negative and that are, that are, that, that are negative as relates to women and girls and as relates to women and girls who are brown and black. Um, I recall um, seeing a two-year-old, he was about two, do a kind of swatting uh, motion towards a person of color. And I thought to myself, now, where did he learn that? Um, and, and, and I'm sure his parents would be surprised to know that like that behavior was coming out of their, out of their, out of their two-year-old. Those, those kinds of influences about people of color, about women's and girls' roles, they are there, they are in the environment. We, we have to, parents and adults, we have to be sophisticated enough to, to look at those, you know, to like examine those, to examine what's happening, the subtle me messages that come through in terms of TV programs, in terms of the newspapers that, you know, the kinds of stories uh, that get reported, all influence uh, our children and they influence us. A well, lot of hard work. Beverly, sure it is. Who, you, said uh, parents, who said parenthood was not hard? <laughs> <laughs> Beverly, I know that you you uh, mentioned this earlier, and I think it would be uh, terrible if we glossed over it without bringing it to the forefront. How significant is it that we, for the first time, have a woman as vice president? Oh, I think it is monumental. I, it's, I mean, however old this country is, however many vice presidents and presidents we've had, not to have elected a woman. Uh, and so I won't get political in terms of that we didn't elect a woman president when I felt we should have, but we didn't. Uh, but, <laughs> but I mean, Think after about, after the, the administration that, that <laughs> was put in there, I don't think anybody would argue that they made the wrong call. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but I mean, think about it. Women are, what, 49.7% of, you know, the population. Um, there is not a job that a woman has not had. There's not a job 
that a man can do that a woman has not done. I mean, I know we we don't we don't serve in combat in the in the military, so perhaps that's an exception. But but I mean that that a woman that we're just now electing a woman as vice president, I think is wonderful. I think it 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 is it is a long time coming. And so as I as I said, if you see it, you can do it. I think this is it's an important message for for young girls and and young women, no matter what color they are. R Roberta, I saw that there there seemed to be something you really wanted to add in response <laughs> to this question, and I, I want to make sure you have this opportunity. No, 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 no. It, I'll just make it really brief. And 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 young boys, yes. young boys also have to see because have, it has to go. And you know, whatever uh, um, one's orientation might be within the 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 gay community, the queer community, just to see that um, there are opportunities for people who work hard, who can achieve who are capable that can do the job, yeah. period. Yeah. They've been doing it in other countries. Women have been leading in other countries for a, a long time. Uh, some of our uh, premier, I'm sorry, is it prime minister? What was it in New Zealand who did such a splendid job regarding COVID? Yes. Right, yeah. right. You know? yeah. um, and so I think it, it's a matter of if, if a person, if a group of people have an opportunity to practice the skills that are needed for leadership there are going to be folks from all of those groups that have been practicing those skills that can be in leadership and can be in very effective leadership thanks joe and and even even if those children don't grow up to be in leadership to have them know that women can be leaders is a big step because where where you get into trouble is if 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 children don't learn that and don't know, know that then they become bullies and we're surprised. Yeah. We shouldn't be surprised. The, the knowledge about who can do what leads to some pretty um, strange outcomes if we're not careful. So let's make sure that we instruct our girls and our boys about capacity. As a, uh, as a general rule on this program, I don't usually have much in the way of my own answer for any of the questions, but I would like to take this opportunity to to say about this question, the significance of, of electing the first woman to the position of vice president. I, I myself am a father. I have two children, one boy and one girl. My daughter is eight years old. And for me, it was a, a very proud and wonderful opportunity to look at my little girl and point to the television and say, you can do anything you want. You can become the leader of this country it makes no difference whether you are a boy or a girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Been yeah. a long time coming, hasn't it, Joe? I think yeah. so. I think so. I think it's yeah. been a long time coming. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. So, so it's it's like lifting up, lifting up women. It lifts it lifts us all up, doesn't it? I mean, it 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 gives the father a chance to affirm to his daughter, if that's what you want. You can do this. You can do this. There's, there's a great Armenian um, uh, expression that I think is patratsir, patratsur, or it may be patratsur, patratsir, which means <laughs> as you rise, lift others. Yeah. And so I think this is part of what we're talking about, about um, a father who is able to point that out to his daughter and see the, the possibilities that exist that didn't exist even a generation ago right very true uh, we are coming to the closing minutes of the show in fact we only have about three minutes left mm -hmm. and that gives me the opportunity to give each of you just a minute uh for any closing remarks that you might like to to tell our viewers at home anything that each of you might want to say uh and i guess we'll go back to the top again uh and, and, and when I say going back to the top, I want to point out this is the order in which all of our participants in the screen placement in my Zoom meeting. So, so uh, Jen, if we could start with you. It has nothing to do with anything except screen placement. Exactly. <laughs> um, I, I really think it's it's wonderful to have this 
opportunity to talk about something like Women's History Month. I don't know how many of the others have been to the Women's History Museum in Washington, D.C., but it's a wonderful, a wonderful mm-hmm. place and a, and a great opportunity to really take a look at, at what women have done. But um, j- just the idea that, that we need to ha- continue to have these conversations is, is worth note. And I'm so encouraged and so delighted to be involved in a community that is aware of those, of those kinds of things and want to provide the opportunity, the information, the leadership, and the skills to, to, to raise women up. Because when we, you're right, when we, were, when we raise one, we raise them all. Um, and, and it's just very important for that to happen. So um, as a lifelong woman <laughs> and a, and a uh, family with only sisters and a mother with only daughters and a grandmother with only granddaughters, I can say that I've been pretty uh, interested in what happens to women down through the ages. And never have I been as excited as I am now. So, so thank you for this opportunity to, to talk about it and to think a little bit more and a little bit differently about, about what, I have, uh, what I've taken a look at in preparation for this program. So thank you, Joe. Thank you. And, and Beverly, uh, again, we, we only have a couple of minutes left. Okay, I'm going to be really quick. I want to read something. It's called Woman by Nikki Giovanni. She wanted to be a blade of grass amid the fields, but he wouldn't agree to be the dandelion. She wanted to be a robin singing through the leaves, but he refused to be her tree. She spun herself into a web and looking for a place to rest, turned to him, but he stood straight, declining to be her corner. She tried to be a book, but he wouldn't read. She turned herself into a bulb, but he wouldn't let her grow. She decided to become a woman. And though he still refused to be a man, she decided it was all right. I just want young girls to write their own story, you know, to, 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 to know that you can be it. Write your story. Absolutely. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. Roberta? Um, a, a, a sort of... I always feel awkward about this, but there actually is a book that will give you a little bit about the history of Latinos in Pasadena. And you happen to have had a conversation with the author here. So I I wrote this book on Latinos in Pasadena, which is available. And and I would love to see a um, companion books to it for our city. I would love to see, uh, um, because the history is so rich, it would be wonderful to see a, a book like that that has to do with women's histories Mm -hmm. uh, that have been here in the city of Pasadena. I would love to see um, plaques or somehow or the other uh, names that recognize folks like Doña Eolalia Perez um, that recognize um, some of the women in the Owens family or the Prince family Mm -hmm. that were involved with Allenstown. I mean, we have the women that have lived here in Pasadena have a really rich history. And I think of uh, finding places where we can have physical information offered to people strolling through the city would be a wonderful thing. And with that, Agreed. I'm afraid we have run Agreed. out of time. Uh, yeah. uh, Ms. Roberta Martinez, uh, Beverly Morgan Sandos, and Jan Sanders, thank you all for being here this evening and for sharing your insights and your thoughts and your knowledge with us. We really, really appreciate it. It has been wonderful talking with you tonight. Uh, For our viewers at home, if there are topics that you would like to see addressed in our program, you can email them to us at arroyolive at pasadenamedia.org, and we may include them in a future broadcast. Until next time, this has been Arroyo Live. I'm Joe Carbonetta. Thanks for watching, and good night.